Hey everybody, and welcome to another Learning Statistics with Jamovi video. How do I do that in Jamovi? In this episode, we're going to be talking about a complex, another complex analysis of variance, but this time we are going to do four variables that are really two independent variables with two levels each in a repeated measures factorial ANOVA. Repeated measures factorial ANOVA. Woo! Yes, this is the fun one. I really enjoy doing this because a lot of uh, a lot of steps to make sure that your data are set up properly and then the module for the re repeated measures is set up properly. It's a it's a step by step one and it takes a lot of work. Before we move on to that with our data, I am using uh, the current Mac, Linux and Chrome OS version of 2.3.3. .3. If you're using Windows, you've probably got 2.3.9 to update to. A couple of uh, errors that were happening on Windows machines, they did a quiet release there. I'm sure the next release is probably going to be uh, the same across all platforms. We'll see. All right, so let's open up some data. Now, what I want you to do for this data set is actually just grab the uh, one of the four main data sets that come with the base program of Jamovi. These four data sets, the big five from Dolan et al. 2009, the tooth growth, the bugs, the Ryan et al. 2013, and the Anderson's iris data. We are going to do the bugs data. And I've got that open right here. Got that open. Now, uh, this is the data. Uh, right here. We've got subjects and we have 93. So a few of these have been cut out. I'm not going to go through and find out which ones have been cut out, but you can see how many um, where the numbers don't align. And we have the uh, student participant gender here. We have the region from where they came. OK, their education. And you can see what kinds of education levels that they coded in here. We have uh, advanced college, some college, high school, um, less than high school, I would imagine is less um, something like that. But then we have our four variables of interest. We have LDLF, LDHF, HDLF, and HDHF. I am going to show you what this is. So this is the Ryan et al. paper. Okay, And I'm in the method section, but if you want to look it up yourself, this is a computers in human behavior from 2013 compared to, to a small supervised lab experiment. A large unsupervised web-based experiment on previously unknown effects has benefits that outweigh its potential cost. You can pause here if you want to read the abstract, if you're interested in this kind of stuff. But we're going to use their methodology here. And on page, uh, the third page is where we find the method section for the first experiment. And here is where they outline what each of these four variables in Jamovi mean. Technically, we have two actual independent variables, disgust and fright. And so we have now low disgusting and low frightening or high disgusting and high frightening. So if we go through and take a look at each of these bugs, uh, I'm not going to be able to name each of these bugs, uh, but we've got uh, bugs that are low in disgust. So whatever this bug is, uh, let me see if I can zoom in for you. So if you want to drop in the comments what each of the bugs are, because they don't actually name them in the caption, it just has pictures of insects. <laughs> Uh, it, oh, they use disgustingness and frighteningness. I don't like those. Uh, I don't like those zombie nouns. Those zombie nouns are awful. We'll just call them disgust levels and fright levels. Let's just let's do that. Somebody should have told uh, the psychologists not to use these zombie nouns. Not that I don't use zombie nouns on my own, but disgustingness. Oh, come on. Come on. It's un unnecessary. And you can see it in text. Oh, no. Oh, no. I don't like that. All right. Whatever this bug is, it's low disgusting and low frightening. I don't know. It depends on who you are, I suppose. And then we have this beetle. Um, I do recognize this beetle. It's like a June bug, actually, uh, from where I grew up. Um, it's got that sheeny back to it. Low disgusting, low frightening. Although if there's a bunch of June bugs, mm, no thanks. Then we have low disgusting, lo high frightening. So we've got um, uh, some kind of wasp here or bee or hornet or ooh, 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 no, thank you. And then we have, uh, oh, gosh, um, this is disgusting to me. I, I'll tell you what. Um, high disgusting, but low frightening. So we've got this kind of beetle or roach of some kind. And then we have your your standard cockroach, your, your standard. looks like it's going to chow on some saltine cracker there. And then we have high disgusting, high frightening. So we have what appears to be a scorpion. Uh, oof. And then um, what appears to be some kind of pincer bug um, that uh, looks as though it's going to haunt my dreams. Cool. Cool, 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 cool. All right. So those are our... Uh, LDLF, LDHF, HDLF, and HDHF. And these numbers here are the dependent variable, which is right here. Finally, oh, I can't, oh, there we go. Finally, the insects were presented again, this time, one at a time, in a randomized order for the participant to rate them on a hostility scale from zero, I would not want to kill it at all, to 10, greatest possible desire to kill the insect. Now, I'm probably going to reveal something about me here, but that's a 10 for all of these. Uh, sorry about that to you insect uh, lovers. That's a 10 for me on all of these, especially these two. If I had the chance, probably just running away, uh, probably running away, definitely foot on these two, and definitely 
hopefully never coming into contact with either one of these. Great. That's me in a nutshell. Perfect. I you learned something about me, viewer. Learned something about me. Okay. So let's set up this Anova. And with all that set up, let's let's do the Anova in Jamovi. Okay. So how we get started is we go up to Anova and we click on this and we go because we have at least one. Of course, we have two, but because we have at least one, we have to do. Sorry about the mouse move there. Repeated measures Anova. We have to use that module. Okay. So we open this. And it's going to um, have us set up our repeated measures factors before we do anything else. We have to set it up. OK, so RM factor one, I think, is what we're going to do is we're going to call that um, discuss level because that was on that one's on the top. OK, or that one's in the front of the acronym that they created for these variables. And if you're not familiar with what I'm talking about here, that's the D. That's the D here. OK, so we're going to do discuss first, because when we look at the order of the variables, it's going to just be super easy to just take this list using the shift. Uh, shift click method and then just click them all over and they'll be in the correct order. So we're going to use discuss level as our uh, first RM factor and we're going to change this one to low because that one comes first in the list and then high. But then we also need to add RM factor two. So this is a different new step. Well, it's technically the same step, but a new step from the one way RM ANOVA that we did in a previous video. So here we are going to do fright level again. Zombie nouns be damned. OK, fright level. And then we're going to do and as you can see, it does A, B, and C instead of 1, 2, and 3. And RM factor 3 will switch back to 1, 2, and 3, depending on how many you have. I think that's a, a nice trick that Jamovi does to make sure that you're paying attention to um, the different levels and um, that. Now, it also is saying, since I have, it knows that I've used the word low and high, it puts a 2 after this. So imagine I had an RM factor 3, like, um, I don't know, uh, deadliness or something like that. Deadly. See, that's not, not, that's not a... Uh, Zombie down deadliness level and I used low and high for a third RM factor. It would put low three in parentheses here. So I know which one that I'm talking about. So as you can see in the cells, this is where I start putting in the this is where I start putting in the actual variables from my spreadsheet. So in the first spot, we want low, low. In the second spot, we want low one, but high two. In the third spot, we want high one, but low two. And then in the fifth spot, we want high, high. OK, hi, hi. So that's the exact order that we have here. This is why you want to set up your RM factors as this in the same way that you've set up your spreadsheet. So if I've set up my spreadsheet in this order, like I have here, then I want to set up my RM ANOVA in that same order. So I can just grab all of these. I clicked on the first one and held shift down and clicked on the last one. That's my shift click um, process there. And then all I have to do is drag them or click the arrow and they're in the exact correct position. Now, if I wanted to, I could make this a three by two by two and um, or excuse me, a two by two by two. Sorry, I meant to say three way. I could make this a three way repeated measures ANOVA, but I would make it mixed in that case if I wanted to put gender here in the between subject factor to see whether or not males or men and women have any differences on the um, disgust and fright levels. We could put that in there. Maybe I'll do that in another video. But in this case, we're just going to stick with the repeated measures ANOVA. Um, the and repeated measures ANOVA allows you to do a repeated measures and COVA as well. So you can put in covariates, but we don't need to do that. Um, and then we can name our dependent variable. Uh, this doesn't really matter except for the plot itself. So we could just call this um, desire to uh, desire to kill level. I'm just using the word level a lot. Uh, we're going to use generalized eta squared. Generalized eta squared is a newer effect size measurement that is kind of like partial eta squared, but allows us to um, get real close into the uh, fact that these are repeated measurements as opposed to in, in, fully independent measurements. So it's a better effect size measurement. And as you can see here, before we just jump into the source table, they are different measures uh, of uh, variance shared between the independent variables and the dependent variable. Let's go through these other options before we move on. We don't really need to change anything in the model itself because we have our three terms, main effect of disgust, main effect of uh, fright, and then our interaction, our within subjects or repeated measures interaction of disgust by fright. And since we don't really need to do any bias correction because it's not unbalanced, we can use type three sums of squares, which is generally by default. Assumptions, we definitely want to get our sphericity test. Okay, Now, sphericity isn't going to matter because we only have two levels for disgust and fright. Sphericity only matters when we have three or more levels or conditions for our repeated measures um, of repeated measures, independent variables. That's what I wanted to say. So we actually don't need this first test. I just wanted to put it on just to show you what it might uh, what it might look like if you were to click on that and you were like, wait, mock leads W is one and greenhouse Kaiser is uh, also epsilon is also one. And the Hune felt epsilon is also one. What is and what does NAN mean here? It just means that sphericity is always met when a repeated measures has two levels per this note here. So we don't actually need to do any of that. We don't we don't really need a homogeneity test because these are not between subject factors. So we'll uncheck that. Now we can use the QQ plot to see whether or not our variable, our dependent variable, which is the desired to kill level is normal. Uh, is normally distributed. We have a little bit of 
<laughs> a little bit of craziness up here. And I'm pretty sure that's these the people who chose nines and tens and for everything. I would probably be one of these dots. Check out my video on how to do QQ plots, how to interpret QQ plots um, to see what this plot really is showing along this um, line. We'll leave it on there because it is showing that, you know, that's this is a pretty normal distribution. Um, we don't need uh, any post hoc tests, I don't believe, uh, because we have two independent, uh, two level or two condition independent variables. So there's not much to compare. Uh, beyond that, uh, we are getting the comparison between the two in our main ANOVA. And there is no interaction between the things. So we don't need to do that. So we're going to ignore post hoc tests for this one. But you would set up post hoc tests by putting whichever ones you want to do post hoc tests for and then choosing your p value correction. We do want to get our marginal means, though. So let's go ahead and get discuss level as term one. Then we're going to click on add new term. We're going to get fright level as term two. And then we're going to add term three, which is going to give us, I held shift down to click both of them. We are going to put them together, which is going to give us our marginal means for the interactions, technically our cell means. And we definitely want those cell means because if we want to make our plot, we definitely need that to make our plot. By default, the plots show up. I want the tables as well, just in case I want to bring them over to Excel and make different ones. Error bars, I would like to switch to standard errors because I like those. Now, uh, closing that, let's get look at options. We can get our group summary. Oh, and I'll show you what the group summary looks like. It's it's just a table here at the and it gets put at the bottom of the uh, output. All right. So let's look at this output. We got our within subjects effects table here and our between subjects effects source table down here. We can ignore the between subjects effects source table because it only gives us the error term for between subjects effects. These values go into um, the within subjects effects tables, but we can ignore them or this. The math is done for us in that case. That's what I mean by ignore it. Um, and so we are left with our uh, three or two variables and our three terms and each has its own residual each has its own error okay so be aware of that so each of these lives sort of on its own set of rows and i like how they offset uh so you can read it a little bit better offset the uh, uh the terms themselves so you can say okay those two rows are close together so they work with each other when you put in the sphericity corrections the greenhouse geyser or the hewn felt this will add more complexity to this table so be aware of that when you add, uh, if you have to add those corrective measures to sphericity. All right, so let's take a look at um, discuss levels. All right, so this is just the main effect comparing discuss low to high. Okay, and we find that our F is 12, 12.18, and that means our p value is less than 0 0.001. But this is a very small effect. And we'll find out when we go down and look at the marginal means what desire to kill levels on the rating. These are very close, these, these means are very close to each other, high and low on disgust, on whether or not somebody wants to kill it. Okay, fright level, now let's take a look at that, has an F of 41.63. That's definitely going to be less than 0 0.001. This is more of a medium effect. So fright, high versus low, and I imagine the desire to kill is going to be higher when fright is higher. So we'll take a look at that uh, as we scroll down. Okay, that's a medium effect with uh, generalized data squared here. That's a it's pretty, pretty good effect. Now, discussed versus, uh, not versus, excuse me, discussed by fright, the interna interaction term, um, is underwhelming. F of 2.15, a P of 0.15, very, very small, very small effect. Let, let's take a look at these marginal means, shall we? Okay, so the desire to kill, and you can see here where I put that is very useful, right? Desire to kill. Very close means, right? 6.5 versus 7.25, so about 0.75 on the scale from 0 to 10. I think it was 0 to 10. Uh, so very close, but small enough standard errors that they don't overlap. And so the desire to kill for higher disgusting bugs is... Uh, higher than for lower disgusting bugs. Of course, disgust is a individual difference and it's an emotion. And so there's a lot to unpack there that we're not going to go into in this. In this, They did it in the paper. <laughs> now, fright is a much stronger effect, as we saw. Uh, we're looking at a more than a full point higher on this uh, 0 to 10 scale. Full point higher with low standard errors. So uh, very, very tight around these mean estimates. And so you can see here that the higher the fright that a bug gives, the desire to want to kill it uh, is much higher. And that makes a lot of sense as I as the my premise of starting this up that there would be tens for me. Now, the interaction was not significant, but you can see here that the desire to uh, kill a bug based on its low fright does have a steeper slope here. So that that is to say that if we maybe saw a larger sample, although it, this is a pretty good sample size, so take that with a grain of salt, but perhaps with a larger sample or different bugs that fit the mold of low fright level, but disgust is higher, we might see an uptick in the desire to kill. So that is to say there might be a spreading interaction with disgust and fright, although not detected in this particular study. So they did not have an interaction. And this is of course what their data looked like in the study. So you can go see, we, we, did, we did their basic 
uh, analysis from the paper. So you can go compare your output to the, the paper itself, which I think is pretty fun um, with these four these four base Jamovi uh, CSV files that they add. So you can you can compare. Did I do something wrong? I don't know. But in any case, what, what you're seeing here is that uh, as disgust increases, regardless of fright, especially when but when especially when fright is low, your desire to kill goes up significantly more than um, the desire to kill regardless of its disgust level. And so that's important to note that the desire to kill is high. Desire to kill the bugs is high if it's a frightening bug. Gotta kill it. Gotta kill it. Just, just gotta kill it. Um, but with disgust, there is a much more rapid growth of trying to get that going, trying to get that, that bug killed. So there you go. And uh, we've got that. Now, here's the group summary. The group summary, again, not a really useful option, Jamovi devs. It just tells you how many people were in the, uh, the um, analysis. So we had 88 in the analysis. So some got excluded. Five of them got excluded. So not all 93 made their way in here. But this is a very high-powered study because it's only, it's only, 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 only uh, repeated measures, independent variables. So there, if there was an effect, then we're probably not going to detect it here. Although, again, with more, with more people, who knows what might, might, might change. So that's how you do a repeated measures ANOVA in Jamovi. If you have any comments, suggestions, or feedback, please leave them down below. Definitely questions. I love answering questions in the comments, as long as the questions are asked in a nice way. Uh, I've several times had to, you know, say that's not how you ask a question on other videos that I have, not on these videos. Y'all are, y'all are great. I love y'all. Thanks for watching. See ya.